It's midnight and we're lying in a ditch. It's almost pitch black. The men move silently into position. They're watching a known IED factory where insurgents work inside to create the deadliest of roadside bombs. And then... From his shoulder, a soldier launches an anti-structures munition and the building is hit. They move fast, killing the insurgents inside. The strike hop was fast and effective. Five IED makers are dead in the buildings behind us, but the enemy are still engaging the soldiers and there's a helicopter circling overhead. This might be Brecon, but it's about as realistic as it gets. A few minutes later and they take two casualties. This is the first time they've used the high-tech laser TES vests, which feeds back immediately if they've been hit by the enemy. This exercise is not supposed to replicate Afghanistan. It also takes lessons from Iraq, Northern Ireland and Kosovo, but they're all brought to bear here. We do similar operations like this uh, out in Afghanistan. Uh, however, the kinetic uh, level will be uh, tempered uh, to what the enemy are doing as well. Earlier in the day, the operation had been planned to every minute detail. Using a scale model of the area, the soldiers are briefed as though this is for real. Clarify it now. The IED makers uh, come under our rules of engagement. Okay, They can be engaged as uh, enemy combatants. All of these men have recent operational experience, having returned from Op Herrick within the past three years. Now they're training for the next level. The planning is as important as the execution, but before the briefing is over, the camp suffers a mortar attack and a casualty. In the ops room, one student has been elevated to the status of company sergeant major. It's important the FOB runs smoothly in all areas and he's learning all about the pressures that brings. It's, it, can be, it can be stressful work, uh, the days can be really long, the nights can, can be even longer. The, the bigger uh, drone we have is they're always changing and we've got to change with them. There's always something to do. It still remains one of the most arduous courses the British Army has to offer. Um, it's arduous by design and it's arduous by the, the very nature of the terrain around here. Home for this two-week phase of the exercise is a deserted farm. The soldiers had to fortify it on their first day, building trenches and filling sandbags. The terrain here is very different from that which the men will face when they return to Helmand. But it's not all close combat. They must conduct patrols to keep the enemy at bay and engage regularly with the local population, played by Gurkhas. Tell him we've come here to help him and just to see what the local population, if they're any good or if they need any help. And, uh... Playing a feared warlord, this Gurkha demands help clearing up the water supply. In exchange, he offers intelligence which will help with the strike op being planned for later tonight. All of the infantry regiments are represented here, including special forces, but not all of these students are infantry soldiers. The course also takes those who work alongside them in theatre, usually in vehicles as the Brigade Reconnaissance Force. While we've been out in Afghanistan then, we have been operating more and more on our feet because, uh, as we know, um, the vehicle movement is quite restricted, especially into the green zone. Uh, so to be able to do something like this um, gives you a lot more uh, experience on the way and the understanding of how the infantry work. This course has already lost seven men due to its tough nature, but the army needs to know the men it sends to lead others into battle can deal with the pressures. Kyle Ark, Forces News in Sennybridge in Wales.